Hi there, Lindsay here. Today I wanted to do a series of curriculum close-ups for you. In my first video, I shared what we were using for our first slash second grade curriculum for the year 2017-2018, but I realized it was extremely difficult to see being so far away from the camera. So I decided that I would go through and divvy out each of our subjects and show you our math, our language arts, our history, and our science as a closer up version of that video. So you can actually see the curriculum a little more clearly. This is going to be at the beginning of each of those videos. So forgive me if I am repeating myself. The, um, and so I wanted to walk you through all of what we have got for Caitlin's curriculum for her first slash second grade year. Let's take a closer look. So here's the God's Design for Heaven and Earth curriculum. This is by Answers in Genesis, and this is the fourth edition, the most recent edition they have put out. This is the student text. It is in full color, and it's got an age range or a grade level range of third through eighth grade. Caitlin will be doing a second grade curriculum in we will just be modifying things slightly to meet her where she's at. We've got seven units in this particular textbook. This is the student text again, and it goes through atmosphere and meteorology, ancient weather and climate, clouds, storms, weather information, ocean movement, and the sea floor. And they have some tips on how to uh, ensure that you are um, working with the students where they're at. So you will go through with, with all age levels using the what did we learn and taking it further. And then usually for the fifth to th or the third to fifth grade level, you'll use the blue box. And if you wish to take it deeper with your sixth to eighth graders, you go in and you work through the green box of information. Now with Caitlin, we will go through and we will likely do the, we'll read through the lesson together. We'll go through the what did we learn and the taking it further. And then we will probably attempt to do the, the blue box together. And the lessons are very short, which is something that we really appreciate because that is one of the areas that um, I am really trying to implement this year is a more Charlotte and Mason approach to how long we sit through a lesson and the 15 to 20 minute mark seems to be appropriate for her age level right now. Caitlin is six and a half. She'll be seven in November. And I think that the 15 to 20 minute mark really will help her to glean what she can glean and let us move on so she can use a different portion of her brain. In the very back, we've got a glossary. And the index. So that is the student text for our weather and water. Here's our teacher supplement. And um, you can print off the worksheets and lab sheets. These are already put away into our file system for this year. The unit quizzes and the final exam. But so here's the teacher's portion. It gives you the answer keys, resource guides. It kind of gives you a why to teach science, which I found to be extremely helpful. And it gives you the how, which can be helpful if you are um, not sure how to approach this particular material. And then it goes through and it sort of gives you even more biblical information on how to go about incorporating the the fall of man and the redemption of man into your science lessons. So each lesson is condensed and it gives you supply list, it gives you the um, answers to the what did we learn and the taking it further portions. And it gives you answers to the quizzes Mm -hmm. 
I don't think that the teacher's guide is absolutely necessary. I do think that you could do this program with just the student text and the, um, the printable worksheets, quizzes, labs, and exam. But it is kind of nice to have this where it gives you, you know, a master supply list. It gives you some resources and it does give you those helps at the beginning on how to teach from a creation standpoint. Now, when I was at the thrift shop, I found this book and I thought this would be kind of fun just for Caitlin to kind of peruse during this particular, um, this particular book. And it's a Houghton Mifflin Weather Watch innovations to literacy it says and it gives lots of just little stories and she can read these as just um, an entertaining kind of thing I don't think these are fantastic literature by any stretch of the imagination but I do think that they are stories that she can go through and just look at to correlate with where we are at during the our weather and water portion of the year so the next section that we will do is going to be our universe and again, it is set up practically the same. We've got our units. We've got space models, outer space, sun and moon, planets, and the space program. And again, it gives you the same welcome to God's design. Here's how you go about this with third through fifth grade. And here's how you go about this with sixth through eighth grade. And then we've got the actual lessons. So that carries on through the entire student text. Look, you do have some hands-on activities with lots of these lessons. And usually the very last lesson is the conclusion where it just kind of wraps up the entire student text to really make you think and remember what you've worked on for the past 12 weeks. We have our glossary again and our index. And it's identical with this teacher supplement. Your introduction, your answer keys, your resources, um, and your master supply list. And this part is the same. This has the exact same information in the creation versus evolution, how to teach science, why to teach science. Um, and so it's, it's kind of nice to have that refresher and I've got my printables here that are already put into our crate system. And on Amazon in their used books, I found the earth and space. It's the Usborne internet linked library of science, earth and space to go along with this. And I do really enjoy these Usborne books that just kind of give you little nuggets of information about the topics that are fun facts and yet they really stick in your mind because they are so short. And I did buy this used and I want to say I might have paid three dollars for it and I'm extremely pleased with how um, how how nice it is. It, it's there's no ripped pages, no writing anywhere. It really um, was in really great condition. So Personally, I like to buy lots of our resource books from Amazon in the used section just to ensure that we have them on hand when we need them, but I'm not spending an arm and a leg. So the last 12 weeks of science are going to be our planet Earth, so our Earth science. And again, we have the exact same setup. We have origins and glaciers, rocks and minerals. Mountains and movement, water and erosion. The same exact breakdown of what to use for each grade level. And then our lessons. I love this. It talks about the Genesis flood. And I think that is a really key thing to understand in the Christian faith is how exactly did that happen? I mean, not that we'll know that <laughs> while we're still here, but you know, some, some scientific background for what we, what we think happened. 
and then Noah's Ark. That'll be a fun activity, creating a seismograph. And you know, you think of earth science and you automatically go to the volcano. I don't know that we will be making a, a volcano this year for ourselves as an activity, but I do think that we will do something along these lines with a seismograph. <laughs> And we've got our glossary and our index. So that is the student text for our planet Earth, the Earth science portion of Heaven and Earth. We've got our teacher supplement. I feel like we're repeating ourselves because it's all just completely uh, the same lineup. Why to teach science, how to teach science, creation versus evolution integrating the seven C's, which are creation, corruption, catastrophe, confusion, Christ, cross, and consummation. And here are my worksheets, lab sheets, units, quizzes, and final test papers that I printed off. And then in the back, we have our teacher master supply list resource guide. And this is kind of nice too. They give you some field trip ideas, which can be really um, helpful whenever you are trying to decide what kind of field trips to do with your children for out, throughout the year so that you kind of give them some a different way of approaching the material that they're learning. So that is our planet, our earth, our planet earth teacher's guide. And then whenever I was also at that um, thrift shop, we found this, the National Geographic Everything Rocks and Minerals, and it's very bright and colorful. I'm not sure how Caitlin will appreciate that. <laughs> but, you know, it's similar to the Usborne type book. It's got lots of just little nuggets of information and lots of really, like, really good pictures to show the kids, you know, and just little nuggets right there. Just little bits of information to kind of help solidify what they've learned in their lesson. And so what will happen is I will go through and with these lessons in the book, I will just sort of flip through here, flip through the index to find, okay, this particular topic has, you know, um, some supplemental material from this, this particular resource. So let's just pop through here. Let's read a couple of things about that particular topic. Lots of really pretty pictures. National Geographic does a really good job with their photos. So that is God's Design for Heaven and Earth. All three student texts, all three teacher supplements, a couple of supplemental materials that we will be using this year.